In the final episode of our visualization series, we'll be going over how to add life to your shots. Through the use of final dressings of characters and props, cinematic lighting and atmosphere, whilst also utilizing Blender's built-in compositor to help push that realism even further. So we're going to be taking this simple shot and just pushing it that bit closer to our concept art. The goal is to give the scene more depth and realism while maintaining performance and fast render times, helping to realize the vision for the director even more clearly. To kick things off, here's the shot we're working in in its current state. It's already looking decent, but if you compare it to our concept art, you'll notice it feels a bit flat. We want to capture that glow, the fog and that warm atmosphere, which will help us to give more depth to the shot. So we already have a good base, but there's definitely room for improvement. So first, let's take a look at our HDRI sky. This is where we'll add a more realistic backdrop, as well as give the shot some real world lighting data. So now that we have a good lighting base provided by the HDRI, let's move on to updating our background assets. In this case, it's this huge canyon. So the current texture isn't the best and it's actually quite distracting. So let's swap it out for something more detailed. Whenever possible, I tend to use scan based models and textures as it will give us more realism as it's being scanned directly from a real world object. So we typically get our assets from an add on called Blender Kit. You can download this from their website, blenderkit.com, or we tend to just source them from our own private asset library. But of course, you can feel free to get them from wherever you prefer. We're just going to spend some time getting this asset looking good in camera as it's only really important what we see in the frame. We're also going to go ahead and duplicate this canyon and move it behind our frontmost canyon. This will help us to create a sense of depth and scale to the environment. Already you can see that this is looking a lot better than it did. Now while we could use Blender's built-in production quality render engine, Cycles, for the most accurate lighting and reflections, performance is always the forefront of visualization as we need to work quickly, so we're going to be sticking with Eevee. Whilst initially you may think the quality isn't as good as Eevee doesn't utilize ray trace shadows and reflections like Cycles does, there are always ways to push Eevee closer to the realism that Cycles provides. For instance, turning on ambient occlusion will help provide our object with some ambient lighting and soft shadows, more akin to that of Cycles, which would give us a better sense of shadows from the buildings all the way back to the canyons in the distance. For more mid-ground detail, I'm just going to add in some old western style wooden telephone poles which will help ground the setting and bring out that classic western vibe too. You could go ahead and add in as many different props and set dressings as you like to really bring this town to life, but in visualization it's about striking a balance between what is needed to tell the story and the time we have on a project. That will all come down to a client's brief. One of the best tricks to create depth is using fog or volumetrics. As volumetric materials can be quite performance heavy, we can go ahead and use fog cards. We have a full library of these, but you can make your own. Source them from the internet, or you can use an add-on like Blender Kit. I'll be placing these in the background to give us that atmospheric haze and distance. We can layer these fog cards in between the canyons and the town, starting with a strong emission for the furthest layer away, and then gradually reducing the intensity as we move closer to the camera. This layering effect gives the scene that realistic atmospheric fall off. This technique works for these kind of environments, but may change depending on the scene. It's just a nice way to add that sense of scale to your environment. At this stage, we can go ahead and add back in our assets that we currently have dressed into our scene. It's looking great, but I feel like we can add some more detail. If you look at the concept art for this shot, we can see that there's some nice foliage being used. And that is something we can add into our scene as well just to push it that bit closer to the concept art. So we can go ahead and grab some foliage assets like this dry grass and some shrubs from Blender Kit or wherever you prefer. And then just start to place these around our scene to give it some more natural detail. It's important to be strategic about your placement as you don't want to compromise performance. You should make sure that you only dress these assets to the camera's view as if the camera can't see it, there's really no point in having it in your environment at all. Once we've got something that we're pretty happy with, we can just add a few more assets uh, that we can see dotted around in our concept art. So like these barrels, for example. So let's just go ahead and place a few of these around the scene and just help to break up that foliage and the repeating shapes a little bit, just to give it some more natural feel. 
Looking back again at our concept art, we can actually go one step further by adding in this flock of birds here into the midground of our environment. Adding in something like this flock of birds introduces motion and liveliness to the scene, suggesting that the town exists in a living world. It creates a dynamic contrast to the static elements of the environment, making the scene feel more immersive. There's a few ways in which we could go about making this, such as using a particle system, or even animating bird assets flying through the scene by hand. But for speed and performance purposes, we can actually just use a video or image sequence of birds flying. So I've gone ahead and downloaded an MP4 from Motion Array, and it's just a flock of birds looping and flying around the sky. We can bring this into our scene using the Import Images as Planes add-on, which comes built into Blender. It just needs to be enabled in the preferences. Once your video file has been imported, we can go to the material that's connected to the new plane that's just been brought in. And we can set the start frame to 1001, as that's the start of our timeline. And then just position your plane accordingly. Now you'll notice that this MP4 didn't actually contain an alpha channel, so we currently only have a white background. There is actually a little workaround using shader nodes that we can make use of to remove this background whilst also retaining the birds. If you go ahead and add in a mix shader and then attach a transparent BSDF as well as the principal BSDF, whilst making sure that the original MP4 sequence is connected to the factor, it should actually remove the background for us. You can also go ahead and play around with the alpha factor too, just to get a better result. Now, if we hit play, you'll see the birds flying through the shot and the white background has been removed. Now let's talk a little bit about Blender's built-in compositor. There are a couple of tricks I want to show you that will help us to enhance the look of the scene. During this series, we've been using Blender 3.6, but if you are using 3.6 or onwards, these tools and techniques will still apply and work in exactly the same way. So normally, compositing is done after rendering in a separate software, but we can actually go ahead and live composite directly into the viewport using Blender's built-in compositor. All we have to do to enable live compositing is to set the compositor to always or visible through camera using this drop down menu up here. To show you an example, you can see I've already gone ahead and added cinematic aspect ratio bars using a texture node and an alpha over node. So these bars will now appear live through the camera. If we mute the alpha over node, you'll notice the viewport shifts back to normal. Let's go ahead and start by adding some lens distortion to push the realism of the shot further. We'll keep it subtle, just enough to simulate the natural curve that you'll get from a real camera lens. You can also adjust the dispersion value on the lens distortion node, which is used to create a nice chromatic aberration effect. Next up, we can add some glare using the glare node, which can be used to simulate a camera bloom effect and will help to create an atmospheric glow around bright lights and highlights. I like to use the fog glow option and play around with the threshold to get it just right. You can also adjust the size of the glow to keep it from becoming too distracting. So I've set mine to around six or seven so it doesn't overwhelm the scene. You can always fine tune it using the mix to control how much glare you want to see, but of course don't go overboard unless that's what you plan on having. Let's also go ahead and add some film grain. Adding a bit of grain is important to make things look more like they've been shot on a real camera. We can do this by using an alpha over node and plugging in a noise texture. Again, just keep this sore. Finally, you could dive deeper into colour grading and correction at this point using nodes like the colour balance, but for now we're just going to leave that for the editing stage. We'll just make some slight contrast adjustments inside the look settings, giving the scene a nice polished finish. So at this stage now, I'd say that this shot is looking pretty good and is in a good state. We can now go ahead and get this scene set up ready for rendering. Before we begin, I feel like it's important that we can see more of the town and the assets that we've put in it. So we can go ahead and reduce the focal length from our current 37mm uh, lens to something like 28mm. Uh, Make sure that you're referring back to your lens list that the client provided for us. And as well has made the town look longer and larger, which also works to our advantage. So when you're happy with the look, we can go ahead and go to the prism tab and then go to the state manager. Now, because we want to retain things like motion blur and our compositing that we've done, we need to make sure that we choose the render option as these things aren't actually supported in Playbusts. From here, you can just fill in your frame range, camera, resolution, and format fields on the right, and then you're pretty much ready to go. 
you can just right click the render node and hit execute. Prism renders can only be done as image sequences, but you can actually use Prism to convert these to video files instead of having to drag it through somewhere like Premiere Pro or DaVinci, and it'll just save you a lot of time just to convert these um, image sequences inside of Prism itself. So you can do that if you just go to the media browser by clicking the arrow next to the file path. So you can select your latest render and then right click inside of the render preview window and you can select convert and then from there just choose your file type. So I like to choose MOV422 because that retains the highest quality of render. But you can choose MP4 if you want a smaller file size, but that will have obviously some compression. So here is a side by side of our render that we've just outputted. One has compositing and motion blur enabled and one does not. You can see how much of a difference it makes to go that extra mile. It just helps to make your shots feel closer to the real thing and have a more cinematic feel in general. Something a client will massively appreciate as it will help to further enhance their vision. So there you have it. That's how you go about adding final dressings, lighting and atmosphere to a shot to help bring it to life. And also how to utilize Blender's built-in compositor to help add more of that cinematic feel to your renders.